the first step is having those conversations with the family and everybody kind of giving their input and figuring out really where they see the goals and objectives of everyone going uh, now and in the future. And then engaging their trusted advisors, their attorney, their CPA, their financial advisor, their banker to say, okay, we've sat down, we've talked, this is kind of the vision we have, um, but we need, obviously we need your input to kind of sh help shape that vision, help implement that vision, and to point out any areas that, uh, you know, where, where we need help in and, and considerations that we haven't taken into account. The main thing is what type, what do they want to see happen with the farm? Um, do they want it um, sold? Um, have they been able to identify a successor that they want to take over the business um, and plan for that accordingly? Uh, retirement needs are also a big one for uh, farmers because a lot of their liquidity, of course, is tied up in the land. And so they need to be cognizant of that, be aware of that, and uh, make sure that their retirement needs are satisfied. And estate taxes are certainly uh, a consideration that need to be taken into account in any good succession plan. Um, they can't be the driving force uh, for that. I think the driving force needs to be the goals, objectives, desires of the owner and their family. And I encourage them to have those communications and conversations with their family on a regular basis and, and figure out indeed what it is that the family wants to, to see happen with the farm. Um, and some of that needs to be driven by estate taxes, but it can't be solely driven by estate taxes. Um, with the current change in the legislation, uh, the estate tax exemption amount now is, is over $5 million per person, over $10 million per couple. Um, so for a lot of folks, estate taxes uh, these days aren't going to be a consideration that they're gonna have to take into account. The biggest one is um, really what happens to the farm when they're when they're gone, um, and if they don't do anything, then it's kind of up to chance. And uh, you know, you could see the family being forced to sell the farm, for example, uh, in a situation where they may want to hang on to it. Whereas if planning had been done up front, um, you may be able to have planned for uh, that and been able to keep the the, the farm in the family. Earlier in the workshop, we heard about uh, you know 70% of, of farmers have not done anything really in regard to their succession plan. So the biggest thing is the awareness um, that um, you know of of kind of the first steps to take. First step is often the hardest step, um, and what to do um, with you know or in regard to engaging advisors. Um, but these types of workshops, for that reason, are crucial because they get they get the message out, um, they get the awareness us out and then they encourage uh, the farmers to take that first step. You can't start too early on the planning process um, and it's a process, it is a process, it's not a one-time event, it's a continuing process um, and so you know just encourage uh, farmers to uh, have those conversations with the family um, and engage their advisors to implement an, a succession plan.